Man, I'm so tired. <laughs> that was a lot for my armies. I didn't like that. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Herbie Fully Loaded. Herbie Fully Loaded is a 2005 theatrical release. It's directed by Angela Robinson, cinematography by Greg Gardner, editing by Wendy Green Brickmont, music by the Black Smoke Organization and Mark Mothersbaugh, and it's written by Thomas Lennon, Robert Ben Garant, Alfred Goff, and Miles Miller. The film stars Lindsay Lohan as Maggie, Justin Long as Kevin, Michael Keaton as Ray, Matt Dillon as Tripp, and Breckenmeyer as Ray Jr. They filmed this in the August of 2004. It obviously features very heavy product placement and some cameos from actual NASCAR drivers. It had a $40 million, no, $50 million budget and made $144.1 million in the box office, which is good, actually. I mean, it's way more than double what it took to make. Double what it took to make would have been $100 million and it made 40 more than that. So it's not like the best, but it definitely made a profit. Um, and then it's got a 40% Rotten Tomatoes and the consensus is that it's cornball and pretty undemanding of its adult viewers. I love what they did with the like point of view shots from Herbie's point of view with the little vignette moment to like make us realize that we're looking through his headlights as his eyes. Um, what I wasn't crazy about is the amount of digital effects they did to Herbie to make him even more lifelike. I think there's a certain charm to Herbie being stuck in very realistic movements for a car, meaning like stiff and mechanic. So like I, I was fine with like the bumper bending a little bit and like the, the things coming down to be his eyebrows and stuff like that. Um, I was fine with all of that. It was like the big like booga booga moment he did or um, there was another one too that was just like super, super digital. Where like the things where like he like goes up on the side, like that's all fine. Like that I can suspend my disbelief for, you know, but it's the stuff where like he becomes rubbery that it's like, okay, no, like some of the charm of Herbie is that you can see his personality without him having that full mo range of motion. Um, so I wasn't crazy about that, but I loved the point of view shots from his point of view. Um, and a lot of the race coverage was really good and um, I, I don't have any complaints about the cinematography. It was a very bright movie, which I think, you know, was the idea. And it was also very stylized as Herbie, uh, which was also fun. And I think I'll talk a little bit more about that in editing. I thought the opening was super fun, giving us a nice reminder of all the shenanigans Herbie has gotten into, and then also closing the gap between like the last Herbie movie, what he had been up to all the way up until we find him now at this coming to this junkyard. Um, it was really awesome to see like how he got into the arcade scene when the 80s came, because you know we haven't had a Herbie movie in a minute. Uh, but it was super fun to see all of that. I really wish we would have gotten a cameo, but I can talk about that later. Editing speaking, this, especially the race sequences were really well paced and edited. Um, but I think I'm going to talk more about, you want to talk about a movie that is very stylized to where using weird and quirky transitions that aren't really used that often anymore worked in its favor. There were so many wipes and there were so many like Herbie shaped transitions or like the colors of Herbie coming across the screen or whatever else. And it worked for the movie because it was, they established that right at the beginning. And then also just, it was as quirky and as weird as Herbie is. And it just fit the movie in my opinion. I thought they were some, like some fun, creative choices to do that. Would the movie have been fine without those transitions? I think so. I think if it was just like normal cutting or fading or cutting to black or whatever, it would have been fine. But this gave it this like Herbie constant centric vibe, which was very fun. And I liked it. I liked that they went that route. Um, and then like there would also be random times where they change like the framing with the Herbie colors, you know, they'd be like, I just, I like that they did that too. Like if they were going to change the aspect ratio, instead of just doing black to change it, they just did Herbie colors, like banners and stuff like that. And I also thought that was super fun. I think the best part of this movie by far and away is the music. The amount of needle drops they have in this from the beginning to the end is insane. I was, 
I just kept asking myself, like every time another song came on that was just like an absolute banger, very well known song, I was like, yo, how much money <laughs> did they spend of their $40 million on getting these songs in these movies? And granted, like, it depends on how much of the song they use and all that kind of stuff like that really can, they can crunch some numbers there. But I was just shocked every time like an absolute banger started to play. I was like, how did we get here? Like, what is happening? I'm so excited. And then obviously they also did the original Herbie theme, which was so exciting. I loved hearing the original Herbie theme and just in its total insanity. Um, and I thought that was so fun being also tied in with all these like, you know, iconic 80s bangers and like, there's just so many songs in this that I was like, okay, like heck yes, let's go off. First and foremost, Al Goff and Miles Miller created Smallville. <laughs> We've come full circle. We've had actors from Smallville. We've had other people that have worked on Smallville. Greg Beeman's directed movies. Like we've had all these kind of things. But now we have Al Goff and Miles Miller who helped write this movie. The creators of Smallville. <laughs> I love it. Now, I know this movie kind of gets a lot of flack. I've never seen this movie. I think I've seen pieces. Um, but anytime I hear about this movie, it's like met with not like disdain, but it's met with like, uh, uh, you know, like it's not the best movie, but whatever. And I understand where people are coming from with that, but I think a huge thing for me, I'll tell you what I would have loved to have seen more. First of all, the thing I would have loved to see more of is her and her brother, because Ray Jr. is barely in this movie. You see him like three times before the big moment at the end where he crashes right after qualifying and then makes the decision that Maggie is gonna be his substitute. And that's like a huge thing that he's like, no, you're the better racer. Like, I want you to be my substitute. When they haven't established her and Ray's like beautiful brother sister bond at all. It's just like, you're supposed to be like, yeah, they're brother and sister. Of course you do that for her. Which I'm like, I mean, not necessarily like, we don't really see that he doesn't want to be a racer. We just see that he keeps crashing and isn't the greatest at it. We never see that like, he's not crazy about racing and he doesn't really want to do it. You know, like we don't see any of that. And then at the end where he's like, no, 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 you're the better racer. I want you to race for me. And it's like, okay, like we've seen her be a really good racer and we get the whole concept that she used to race and wanted to race, but got in a terrible accident. And now her dad never wants her to race again, blah, blah, blah. But I really would have loved to have seen Maggie and Ray bond over this stuff. So like, hear me out, get rid of Kevin. <laughs> I love Justin Long. I think Justin Long's fantastic. I like Kevin's character fine, but to solve this problem, if instead of this romantic moment she's having with Kevin, she could have done everything she did with Herbie, with her brother, and that would have like, imagine, <laughs> like it just would have solved every problem and motivation. Like I would have been like, of course he's gonna be like, dad, no, it should be Maggie, like I'm calling it it's gonna be Maggie. And like, they would have been keeping that secret from her dad, like together. They would have been, you know, like it would have been, it would have been so good. I'm sorry to Kevin. <laughs> Trip gives me the ick, gives me the ick. He is so creepy, so nasty. I don't know how Matt Dillon is so good at that. I see where people are coming from with the story being kind of like cornball, I hear, um, and unlike demanding of the adult viewers. What I think people are like maybe not super focusing on is this movie of all the Herbie movies is the most Herbie centric from Herbie's point of view. Like, yes, of course, you know, we have Maggie as the main character going through this whatever, but they focus a lot on Herbie. Like we start with Herbie coming to this junkyard and not wanting to die. We see when she's trying to pick out a car, Herbie trying desperately to make him the choice for her. You know, we see Herbie's heartbreak when she's trying to like win this stock car. We see like we're along with Herbie much more than kind of in the previous films. Like obviously Herbie's a huge character in the other movies, but I think we focused a lot more on the people. And I think this one, they tried to be a little bit more like, hey, it's literally called Herbie. Like all of these movies are about the car. Maybe we should make Herbie a little bit more of a character. And I think that's what they tried to do here, which made a sacrifice of like some of the depth of the human storylines 
which I totally get and understand, which is why I offer the solution, get rid of Kevin, replace it with Ray Jr. and have all the other Ray Jr. stuff. And just now they have this added element of like secretly having Maggie race in these street races and bonding with Herbie together and just like, you know, all that kind of stuff while also simultaneously Herbie bonding with yet another human being and getting to do what he loves in the race. Um, I think that would have solved that problem. No offense, Justin Long's character, Kevin. There are some huge names in this. Come on, Michael Keaton, Matt Dillon, Lindsay Lohan, Justin Long. Uh, so many cameos from the NASCAR racers. There's just so many big names in this. And then Thomas Lennon, who helped write this, is Tripp's brother, who's like his PR person throughout the movie. Um, I thought that was great that he got to be like a little cameo side person, but also helped contribute writing to it. Um, Matt Dillon, I'm pretty sure the last Disney movie he was in, he has been in a Disney movie, so some of you who have joined recently might not realize, he was in the movie Tex, which I never think about until I hear of Matt Dillon, and then I'm like, <laughs> because his performance in that film is disgustingly good. I am always, 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 always taken back to the phone scene. Oh my god, it's so moving, I can visually see it in my brain, vivid as day, like I know I have that clip saved somewhere. That scene is so powerful and Matt Dillon really is such an incredible actor, especially when he was that age because I know I think around that in text he was also like in The Outsiders, which he's amazing in obviously. So I didn't really see Matt Dillon in much after all of that. I've only ever seen him after like, you know, Tex and Outsiders. I've only ever seen him be characters like this because he's got such like, a... no offense, Matt Dillon's amazing. He's great. I actually don't know that. I know nothing about Matt Dillon. So I'm not gonna say he's amazing. He's great. He's a good actor, but he's got kind of a turd blossom face. Um, and he was, did a really good job at this because he gave me the ick big time. Um, and I'm sure hopefully he's not like that in person. <laughs> The toupee reveal, amazing. When he did like, the Dave or whatever his name was, when he did like a little like circle to make sure no one was watching and his toupee like flapped up in the wind. So funny, such a great visual gag. Um, there's a pair of death, I'm kind of cheating. I always say it has to be seen or said on screen. They talk about her mom a lot. They never say she died, but they say it's been 10 years. After what happened to your mom, I could never let it happen to you. So it's, she died. Um, but I, I've been big on like, they insinuate death, but I don't outright say it. But here's the thing, normally when they insinuate death, but don't outright say it, it's just, my mom is gone. It's not like, it's been 10 years, it's whatever, whatever, it's my mom is gone. Which means, my mom is gone could be, she left and abandoned you, or she died. Where this, it's been 10 years, I don't want the same thing that happened to your mom to happen to you, stuff like that, she died. So I am counting it, because come on. Um, and then Herbie is such a gentleman. <laughs> when Kevin was trying to spy on Maggie changing and Herbie, Herbie kept <laughs> dipping the mirror, amazing. Um, but also Kevin, ew. Um, and then also in, uh, in the same vein, when she goes to sit on Herbie, but she's a little too far away. So he rolls up to make sure she can sit on his hood. So sweet. It's such a small little moment. Another thing, um, the romance between Herbie and this beetle, this bug, I can't, I can't deal with that. I, I'm, I'm really glad it didn't, wasn't as extreme as like previous times that Herbie's had like a little love interest moment. Um, they definitely didn't overdo it, which I was really happy to see. It was just like, oh yeah, he obviously has just like some kind of crush on this car, but whatever. Um, the thing I didn't like about it though was the antenna boner joke. They did it twice where his like antenna stuck up and it's like, hey man, this is a family movie. <laughs> That's a boner joke. Uh, so that was a little, ooh, I wasn't crazy about that. Um, but I'm really glad they didn't push Herbie's love, you know, story too much. Um, because, you know, they already had Maggie and Kevin going, which we also didn't technically need, though I love Justin Long, and so. Um, this movie also showed me how much I know 0% about race cars. When they got in the car for the race and all of them picked up their steering wheels and shoved them into where the steering wheel goes. Why is the steering wheel not already in there? I know nothing about race cars. I did get a little emotional, but I didn't cry. Um, and I just 
I think they did a really good job of Maggie and Herbie in this movie. I do wish it was better, but this wasn't bad. It was fun. It was decent. It was a cute Herbie movie. Um, I think the very first Herbie movie I love the most, and then it'd be this one. The other Herbie movies, meh. It's fine. This one and the first one are great. Um, I would have died to have seen Dean Jones in this movie. Um, but I don't know when he got diagnosed with Parkinson's. So I don't know if he had Parkinson's by the time this movie came out. Or he just had no interest in being in a cameo anymore. Or whatever else. I know he passed away, I believe, in 2015 from Parkinson's. Um, so I don't know if he did already have it by 2004 and was just didn't want to be in the movie because of it or whatever else, which I totally respect. That's everything I have for Herbie Fully Loaded. This was decent, okay? So my final rating is seven Volkswagen Beetles out of 10. Our total movie count is. Our parent death toll is. Cry count is still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday, sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Is this the first movie of New Year's? Should I be saying something? Buy merch. Because merch is great. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you, and don't be trip about it, obviously. <laughs> trip makes me think of Trip McNeely from Can't Hardly Wait. Trip McNeely!